CEO says you're stealing if you're working two jobs. Okay, what's the logic? Uh, well, let's find out. So today we have a CEO that fired two software engineers because they were working two jobs at once. He went on LinkedIn and he wrote a post saying how if you work two jobs, you're stealing and you're not an ethical or an honest person. His name is Davis Bell. He's what, the CEO. What, 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 he, <clears throat> what did he actually say? It's a new form of theft and deception and not something in which an ethical, honest person would participate. I think that do you have to disclose because like if you lie and you say I'm not working any other job and you are, then yes, clearly that would be unethical and it would be deceptive, right? I mean, of, of course it would be. And I think in other situations, it, it could be as well. But if this isn't explicitly asked or this has no real bearing to your actual job uh, requirements or your obligations, then I don't think it's a big deal. You generally sign a non-compete contract. And that's the thing, right? It, and, and this is the point that I'm making is that uh, I, I usually try to hear out what people say even whenever they have an opinion that is generally wrong. I try to hear the right and wrong opinions and the wrong and right opinions. So we'll see what this says. But I do think that, yes, if you are working at a company with a non-compete clause and you're secretly working for another company inside of the same industry, then yes, you are. it's absolutely unethical and it's absolutely dishonest and you should absolutely be fired for that without even a question. Well, that's different. You're right. That is different. So let's see what the context is and you're not an ethical or an honest person. His right. name is Davis Bell. He's the CEO at Canopy. Bald. Now, I think it's pretty obvious that I'm pro being overemployed, but only if you can handle it. It starts here. We've caught and fired two recent hire engineers who never quit their last job at a big tech company when they came to work for us. They were following a new trend of picking up a second full-time job while lying about it to both employers. Did they mm -hmm. say, I am not working two full-time jobs, I'm only working for you? Did they commit? In well, I, I think that, yeah, what I'm saying is that I think in a lot of these contracts, especially with software engineer and intellectual property type jobs, you do have to sign non-compete uh, contracts. I know like my dad had to sign one whenever he worked at, at the company that he worked at. So yeah, I have no, I have no problem if you're not, if, like theoretically, like if you're not signing a non-compete, and if you're not explicitly lying about working two jobs, then I think that it's 100% ethical, 100% fucking fine. And I think, honestly, the employer doesn't really have any grounds to, like, ask you, oh, well, can you, like, can you quit all of your other jobs just to work at this one? I think that a non-compete clause is logical because it's in the same industry and it could be a competitive advantage. But anything else is probably um, overreach. What if it's not a competing company? Well, then that's different. Any way to not work at another company. Because if so, then yeah, you're right. That's wrong. Don't lie to your companies about that. Don't break agreements like NDAs and non-competes. But exactly. let's be real here for yeah. a second. If there's no agreement to not have a second job, it serves no purpose to tell your company that you have a second job. Especially no, I, I, I don't think so it would. I don't think it would. And I think it would probably be bad for you if you said you had a second job. Especially if you're not an executive. As an employee, what would you gain from it? Probably nothing exactly. but suspicion and ammo to use against you. Yes. Some people might say, if you don't tell your company, that would be lying by omission. But in my opinion, it's self-preservation that just ends up looking like malice. He continues. Well, it is, it is self-preservation, and that's what matters. Because at the end of the day, if that company thinks that you are a liability, they will throw you in the fucking garbage in a second. Don't forget about that. Always do what's good for you. Use his LinkedIn post and says, this is not about side hustles or moonlighting. These were people holding down two full-time synchronous jobs and lying about it, trying to be in two meetings at once, etc. Their early performance was really bad. And fortunately, we have great managers who sniff them out very quickly. Whenever I read stories in the media about people doing this, I'm usually surprised that they don't make a bigger deal of the core moral issues at play. You know, it gets fun when CEOs talk no, I don't think that's the case at all. I think that whenever you look at this here, and what is the problem here? The problem is that their early performance is really bad, and managers found out about it. So the problem isn't the fact that they were working two jobs. The problem is that their performance at one of the jobs was bad. That's really what the issue is.
It has nothing really to do with working two jobs. They could be working five jobs. And if their performance was good, I bet this guy wouldn't care. I bet he cares because they're doing a bad job. ...about moral issues at work. <laughs> he says, working two full-time jobs is stealing. And it also involves a great deal of lying and deception. Now, Davis, I don't think people should take two full-time jobs and then not follow through with their commitments. Exactly. I don't think that's right. I don't, um, I don't promote that. I not every that. person out there working two full-time jobs is stealing. You can't make blanket statements like that, it's David. It's such a stupid thing to say. It's such a ridiculously stupid thing to say. And it's like, I don't think this is a situation where like the exception is being turned into the rule. I think that in most cases with most people that are working two jobs, the jobs don't really interfere with each other in a professional way. Like, sure, I can agree that most likely maybe pay people a level of wage so they can, they can do only one. I mean, like, these are software engineers, man. Like, the odds are they're making a good living with their one job. But you could be making twice as much if you had two jobs. Like, yeah, we're not talking about, like, gas station employees or something like this. These are engineers. These software engineers don't need two jobs, as you yeah. think they get compensated enough. But some people need two jobs just to survive. Yeah, and this do. post makes it sound like everyone wanting to make more money and do more for themselves and their family is a ruthless, lying, deceiving thief. Most people exactly. don't have a business to just go and sell a product, to just go and make more money. And they aren't in charge of their It's salary. surprising that somebody who's a CEO of a company would be this bad at communication. I think that he's probably just really mad that it happened and he felt like he got cheated or something like that. And he's being emotional about it. But it's weird to see somebody who's this bad at communication, who has a high position like this. He was angry. Yeah, he was angry or when that will be adjusted if it gets adjusted so all most people can do is get a second job and can we mention yeah. the people just for a second that are already basically working two jobs but at one job shout out to those yeah that's what happened at home depot my dad was thinking about just like working at home depot after he retired but then he learned that they made the people they fired like a third of the people at home depot that were doing inventory and then they just made the sales associates do inventory at the same time as helping the customers Problem solved. There it is. People, those people are putting in 80 hours a week already. It's basically already working two full-time jobs. All it should really just come down to is, are you available? Are you reliable? Are yeah. you putting out quality work? Are you breaking any contracts that you signed? Any non-competes? Exactly. Any NDAs? Yeah. No, you're not? Well, it's then totally if fine. everyone is satisfied with your work, why does it matter if you're working for multiple people? Yeah, so and I also think that the problem is that if you say that it is okay or it's bad because it could potentially put you in a position where you'd have to prioritize one thing over another with a job, I think that you can make the exact same argument for having kids. So this is actually an argument that used to be used against women to keep them down in the workplace is that they wouldn't give women promotions and they would pass them over for different types of advancements and positions because they were considered, oh, well, you know, she might get pregnant or she might have to take care of her kid or something like that in the future. And I think that you could apply this exact same thing to having a second job at the same time. So I think that, yes, unless it's actually manifesting and affecting the job and it already has or it's being a, uh, you know, I mean, it's the same thing this guy said. Yeah, and this is non complete or something something like that used to well yeah it doesn't happen as much as it does now i'm sure it still happens now but it's probably a lot less seriously tell me why is it stealing why is everyone a thief if they're working two jobs at once is it a loyalty thing is it they aren't getting your full attention is it how can they manage two meetings at the same time they're dishonest unethical people if they find a way to make that work because if that's the case you're the ceo of canopy but you're also an angel investor in what seems to be like 11 companies if I scroll down on your main page here, we can see your current experience. You're the CEO of Canopy. But right here, it says you're an angel investor for various companies, 11 different companies. Now, I don't know how much time this takes from your schedule during the day, but I imagine it surely takes some. So you can work. It, the, the, this, is, this is not as much of a gotcha as this guy is making it out to be, or it doesn't necessarily have to be, because probably most of his investments are you know, like non-voting shares, or he has, he's, in, he's vested in a group of other people and he's actually not making decisions for this company probably on a weekly or maybe even monthly basis. It might be at the very most a quarterly basis. 
So this is, it is on a surface level a very good argument, but I don't think that it really stands a strong litmus test whenever you look into it. Now, I do also want to say that there are, while this is a bad argument, I think that there are many other arguments that are very similar to this that are completely fucking legitimate. Whether it's people that have different advisory positions, people that have other types of responsibilities and roles uh, that are coinciding with governmental positions, and also people that are serving on like multiple boards of directors. So yeah, I, I think that there are many other instances of this being true. However, I don't think that being an angel investor into other companies necessarily implies this. One full-time job and then just have 11 different part-time investments that you're, that you're in? Because that's not stealing if you have part-time jobs. Or is it stealing if it's just full-time? It seems a little yeah, bit... I, yeah, again, and it, it, like you can tell by... Like that argument that he's making is clearly not a very good argument. And I think that the reason for that is because the person who is the CEO here, this is clearly a terrible fucking argument. And, and they, they clearly meant to say something else. They were just pissed off and they made an ass of themselves. How's it stealing if you're, you're the investor? What he is implying is that by investing in another company and investing your time, obviously, like you would probably like he's not just probably picking these out of a dartboard, right? He's decided to invest into these companies and he probably does have at least a limited level of oversight, although I think it probably is maybe quarterly or sometimes annually or semi annually. So a lot of these people don't have, you know, hands on oversight into a lot of the companies that they're investing into. However, I do think that, like, if you are investing into these other companies and you do have your hands on a lot of cookie jars, that it doesn't look particularly good whenever you complain about other people doing something that is similar. Hypocritical. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's funny because just the other day, yeah. Equifax did an audit of their employees working there by using the information it collects on mm -hmm. everyone. And they basically outed their own employees. They found 24 employees or contractors with two jobs and they were fired. And that's pretty spooky, to be honest. Your own company using the information it collects on everyone to spy on their own people. Anyways, the reason that I mentioned that... Getting high on your own supply. What's wrong with that? That is that the CEO of Equifax also happens to be a board member at another company. But here's the funny thing. Not just a regular board member. He's a lead director. So I guess this takes even more responsibility than... Not necessarily. These guys just invent these roles, okay? Like, we do this all the time. Many companies do this all the time. You can just, you just invent something and you just say, yeah, th this is person is a lead director and, and that's all there is to it. Now, I do think that, again, it's only really a big problem whenever it's something that has to do with a non-compete clause or you're underperforming at your job. I think that if you're working two jobs that are not competing with each other and you're doing both of your jobs well, firing somebody for having two jobs like that, I feel is just completely fucking stupid. The regular board member positions, right? Now, what's really hypocritical here is that if we scroll down further into this article, we can see that Mark Begor, the CEO of Equifax, wrote yeah. an email to his employees that week. He said, we expect our team to be fully dedicated to Equifax and have one role, their job at Equifax. Now let's talk about the lead. That's silly. I think that's very silly to say. It, it depends on what jobs they have. And if they have a non-compete clause, like, is it like, here's a question, right? This is really what this argument kind of comes down to is that, is it ethical for a company to say that you should have a non-compete with any other job? Like period, if you're working at this one job, you can't work at any other job. Because at a certain point, like there, there are a number of arguments to be made about this, right? Because like at a certain point, there is the argument to be made that it, this is a contract that is being made between two, uh, two partners. Neither partner is being made to sign anything. Uh, nobody's being held against their will. So if somebody signs a contract that's not advantageous to them, is this always the fault of the contract holder? I don't think that it is. Sometimes people do things that are not in their best interest or they do something and they sign up for something and then they act like they're a victim after that. So there's a part of me that says that that's not a bad thing. But the issue is that 
I think that if you applied this, this is kind of what, what I've said before with like the ethical standard of would everybody, if everybody did this, would the world function better? I think the answer to that is no. So it's like, while I don't think this is a big deal and it's not like something that I would say on a fundamental level was bad, I still think that, I, I, I still think it's like, it, it's not really, it's not fundamentally bad, but I think if everybody did it, it would be bad. Legality of it all. I'm going to assume because you put full time job, you mean a mm -hmm. regular salaried position. Yeah. A salaried exempt employee is someone who receives a fixed amount of pay regardless of how many hours they work each week. Sometimes you have a salaried position where you can manage to get work done ahead of schedule. Yeah. This is where you can leverage being overemployed. I imagine this is the part where people go, well, if you finished all your work, you should go to your manager and you should find more work to do. But first off, that isn't how this works out all the time. Sometimes there are blockers involved. Sometimes there are scheduling conflicts. Sometimes there are by the end of the week expectations. Well, that's not always true. Like I know whenever I worked for the government, there would be a certain amount of forms that we would receive. And after we received all those forms, we were done. These were physical forms. So it's not like they can just say, oh, we'll just go over there and start auditing people now because we don't know how to do that. We're not trained how to do that. So like functionally, there were many times whenever I was working at the government that we finished work two hours early and there was nothing else to do that we were trained to do. And if you know you can beat their expectations. Did the government job does not count? I think that it usually does count. So, like, for example, uh, like, I, I think that if you give me any job, not any job, because I don't know the nuances of every job, but I think that there are many cases where you have certain production standards. And, like, let's say your job is, uh, I don't know, building chairs and you're out of lumber for the day for building chairs. And this is what your job training is. You don't know how to build tables. You know how to build chairs. So after you get done building chairs, it would not be a good idea for a manager to say, go over and start building, uh, go building tables because you don't know how to do that. You're not trained how to do that. So actually having you do that would, I think, apply the Peter principle, which is the more people that you put on the job that are not necessarily, not Peter principle, fuck, what was it called? That's the one whenever people get promoted. I, I forgot the, was it the one where if you put more people onto something, it makes it go slower. Yeah, uh, I, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, not 80-20 rule. That's not what it is. But either way, uh, Pareto, yeah, regardless, it's that if you put somebody on a job that they're not trained for, you're not going to get a good result. This is not a good use of an employee's time to have them start fucking going ham on something that they're not trained to do. This is a bad idea. Should be shipped just gone. Uh, gone with if you're a carpenter. How the fuck are you going to make some stuff without wood? Without wood? Well, no. I mean, there's just sometimes like you just don't have any wood for the day because the shipment it arrived or maybe it didn't arrive and there's nothing to do that day. I mean, there, there's a million. Like, I mean, I think that COVID is, I mean, like how many supply chain problems has there been in the past two or three years? I don't, I don't think this is unreasonable to say and get it done early, what's the problem? Do you really think workers will run back and say, but boss, I've completed my work. Give me more. I'm all done. Why would people do that? What do they get for working harder? More work. What's their incentive? A chance at a $50 gift card, a trophy. What are the chances they're going to be Store rewarded credit. for asking their company for more work the same way they would if they just went out and got a second job? In scenario one, they get more work and the same amount of money. In scenario two, they get more work and more pay and right. leverage, meaning if one job fails, you have another. What we see here is your very narrow view as a CEO. You're upset that people are leveraging what they can for more. What we're finally seeing this here- This is exactly what it is. Uh, you, you should always try to leverage whatever you can for yourself. Uh, I, I think that there's a point where you should try to not affect other people negatively or affect other, uh, you know, your job negatively. But I think that if you're acting in your own self-interest and you're trying to, you know, make a living and, and, and do well for yourself, uh, I, I don't think that you always should give somebody else like a company like this the benefit of the doubt. 
Some of this guy pretends that he knows what it's like to have a regular job. Oh, I, I did. I, I've had a regular job. Uh, I worked for two tax seasons at the IRS, and I didn't really work for Sam's Club. I worked there for like a week or something like that. But yeah, I've had a regular job before. It was awful. That's why I'm here. Our employees stepping up to play the same not game you the as video? you. You're just upset. Oh, well, well, wait, what do you mean? Not you, man, the video. Well, how do you know, how do you know like what this guy's work history is? Yeah, I'm confused. Like, how, how do you know what his work history is? I, 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 yeah, I, I don't understand. Like, how, yeah, how would you even know that? He's a YouTube. He's a YouTuber, right? But yeah, you're right. I don't know. Yeah, you don't know. It's like saying Mark Rober's never had a job before because he's a YouTuber. The guy used to work for NASA. That they're starting to figure out the rules. He continues and goes, go. I guess some people feel that stealing from companies is less wrong than stealing from individuals. Uh. Uh. Depends on the company. I mean, I, th I think that, like, yeah, stealing is always bad. I will definitely say this. I am not of the mindset that, uh, you know, like, I know this was happening a lot, like, a couple years ago, whenever there were a lot of riots. People were like, oh, it's okay to vandalize or steal from this store because we have decided that this store is immoral, so it's okay for us to vandalize it. I think this is ridiculous. That's just people trying to justify bad behavior. But at the end of the day, if you feel like the company is mistreating you, no, I mean, that's what you're going to do. I think that's just what happens. In reality, companies are owned by people either directly in the case of our employees or indirectly by the retirement funds that are invested in this venture. That's true. And private equity and investment funds that own companies. That is very true. Yes. Whenever you steal from a company, you're not stealing from some amorphous blob that the money just comes out of randomly. It just is, is randomly generated. Yes, you are stealing from people every single time you steal from a company. This does happen. You're stealing from those who are depending on you to get work done and whose career ride on the success of the companies for which they work. Won't someone think of the CEOs? This is... No, I, I think that's a silly thing to say, too, because there's a lot of people's 401ks that are mutually invested into a lot of different mutual funds and other types of investments that would be negatively affected if a lot of people started stealing from that, uh, from that store. And this is, again, something that would happen if everybody did this. Would this damage the company's value and would this damage people's retirement funds and investments? The answer to that is yes. And I think also this is not a rich people problem. There are a lot of people that are making less than $50,000 a year that have retirement funds. They have, uh, you know, small levels of investments. So I, I think that this is, again, this, this is coming from a perspective that, it's like almost like an eat the rich type thing. And I can get behind some of that stuff, but I don't think this is an example of it. Uh, stealing from rich, it was okay. Well, what I'm saying is that you're not stealing from the rich. That's the thing. All that stuff is getting stolen by, uh, by the government. Well, I mean, I don't know what you mean by that. Poor CEO can't afford fourth house. So sad. Well, like how many of you guys have like retirement funds or, or like different 401ks that are invested into different things? Yeah, it's a good number of people in chat. And unless you want to say that everybody in my chat is just a rich guy, I think you have to concede that a lot of normal people have retirement funds. And a lot of normal people have investment funds. It, 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 this is not a rich people thing. <clears throat> the first time in a while, though, that I've seen a CEO try to make their company seem like a human. Because 99% of the time, executives love to hide behind that ominous corporation veil. It's not my fault the company had record profits and we can't afford to give you your 2% raise this year. It's the company's fault. I love how this almost sounds just a little bit like Barack Obama. Listen. The company had record profits and we can't afford to give you your 2% raise this year. It's just the a little fault. bit. I don't own the private jet. The company does. I just own the company. I think we've seen Look far too much of this sort of rhetoric by now for you to try and use the, but we're humans too. It's not working. Like, I agree. It's definitely not good when people take on responsibility and commitments and then don't follow through. But I don't think most people are intentionally trying to screw over their teammates or their company. They're probably just trying to make more money. Yeah, I, I will. I think that that's, those two things are not mutually exclusive. So whenever you're trying to make more money, but you're doing it in a way that's damaging to the people that you're working with, 
then you are effectively, you're not trying to screw them over intentionally, you're just doing it on accident. Or it's just a byproduct of your own selfish behavior. So what is really the difference between doing something on purpose versus doing something accidentally? Well, the effect is the same. So I, I don't think that like, oh, well, I'm not doing this to you to hurt the company on purpose, so it's okay. I think if you're still doing it, it's still bad. But then you have a few bad apples that come in and try to do this and yeah. ruin it for everyone. And I think that's what's happening here. You want us to consider the people at the company, right? And those humans and their human emotions. Yeah. But do those same people, those same companies consider their people when they do an unannounced mass layoff because of some decision made behind closed doors, because of some acquisition? No, they exactly. don't. Exactly, yeah. And, and this is the thing. And, and what he's saying here is completely true. And this is why people don't have a lot of sympathy for stuff like this. Even if it is morally or ethically wrong to do something like this, people simply don't care because they think that these companies already engage in morally or ethically unsound things. So who gives a fuck if they do that? Who cares? They just fire you. They're not considering what your investment plans for the future were like. Like, yeah. business is business. It's not always moral and feelings get hurt. You're disposable. And that's what you'll say to your employees as you walk them out of the door. So that's what I'm going to say to you here. It's just business. Stop trying to go for our feelings. And this is where it gets good. This is the cherry on top because it's just such a ridiculous argument. Thank God. Let's go. He says, and finally, you're very likely stealing a job from someone else who wants and needs it. It's impressive to me that somebody is a CEO and an angel investor of 11 different companies and they're this bad at communicating. Yeah, it, it, it's very, very bad. Yeah, how, how do you get in this position? W wouldn't this mean that you're Family? stealing board yeah, seats from all of the companies you're invested in? Wouldn't well, you've got to keep in mind, too, like a lot of people are really good at one thing. Like, for example, uh, Ben Carson. Ben Carson, like fucking world renowned, world class surgeon. Nobody questions this. But does that mean he should be president? Oh, I don't know about that. Just because something's really good at what somebody's really good at one thing, it doesn't mean that they have any expertise in anything else. True for any job with applicants? Like, what about part time workers? I'm curious. If you have a full-time job and a part-time job, are you still stealing a job from someone else who needs it? Or is it only stealing once it becomes two full-time jobs? Is it stealing if it's two part-time jobs? Well, what about three? What about people just trying to support themselves? Yeah. Are they stealing jobs from other people doing the same? I think that people just trying to support themselves is not a very good argument. Now, it's, it's a justification and it's, it's a reason, but it's not an excuse. Just because you're trying to support yourself, I don't think that that necessarily entitles you to do things that are unethical or that hurt other people. Now, you can still do them, and I've done them myself. I'm totally okay with that. But what I'm saying is you can't do that and then act like that's okay. I don't think that just because you need something means that you can take it on an ethical level. Now, if you want to do it anyway, that's fine. But I'm just saying it's unethical. Wait, 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 wait. Are, are you saying that everyone should just have one job because other people want jobs too? Because that's what it seems like. Yeah, Is stupid. this really the argument here? It's... And then Davis continues with some gatekeeping. He mm -hmm. says, so to me, this isn't some fun new social trend. It's a new form of theft and deception and not something in which an ethical, honest person would participate. Gatekeeping 101. What, what makes them dishonest? Is it the you should know because you're paying them and the, the, some other company is also getting their attention? Do you feel cheated on? Is this like a abusive relationship <laughs> sort of thing? Because it's a business relationship, yeah. not a romantic relationship. And you're acting like it is. At least that's your reaction. People are not dishonest if they're not telling things that don't concern their company, especially if they've broken no agreements and they're not negatively impacting their companies for doing it. It's funny because you're like hiding things from your employer. That's the ultimate sin when it's really not. I think hiding things from your employer that could affect your employment could be uh, deceptive depending on what those things are.
Not always, but depending on what those things are, I think that's fair is to say that. Same as hiding things from other people that rely on you and you have an agreement with them. And then it's like, well, you know, it might not work out. It's like, for example, if you tell somebody that you're going to give them a ride somewhere, but you don't tell them that your car is in the shop, and so the day that it comes for them to get a ride, you can't do it because your car is in the shop, and they didn't know that at a time, well, I think that this was kind of disingenuous, right? You should have told them that ahead of time. But I think in this is, again, in like 95% of situations, it's totally fine to do this. Someone's done that to me? Yes, exactly. That's why I, was, I used an example that I think a lot of people have had before. I think what you're upset about is your bad employees that happen to have two jobs. Exactly. I agree. Yeah, yeah that's what it's about. It's about the bad. It's about them not doing their job. Firing. Poor it's got nothing to do with how many jobs they have. They're doing one job wrong. That's all you need. Or performing workers. But I don't agree with labeling people who work two full-time jobs that can manage it however they do it as dishonest, unethical, lying people. Towards the end of his post here, he leaves us with a few tips oh. for how to find these scumbag oh, workers working two jobs at once. I thought it would be useful to share a few things these individuals had in common that should serve as red flags. None of these are by themselves an indication of a problem, but taken together, they may indicate a bad actor. And this is the part where you should put in parentheses right here. It should say whether you're working two jobs or not. None of this stuff he lists, actor. which I'm about to show you, has anything to do with having a second job. But well, the first one is, rather than updating LinkedIn to reflect that they work at Canopy, they made their LinkedIn private upon accepting our offer. That's a little bit creepy, to be honest. Okay. Why are you checking their LinkedIn after they work there? I mean, I get why you did it now, and you can see things adding up, but yes. some people just make their LinkedIn private because they don't want to be bothered when they have a job. You know, Most people only use LinkedIn if they're talking to recruiters, applying to jobs, or they're that type of person who wants to share the entire well, life. They're on fucking social media. They're going to do the, they're going to do whatever they do with it, right? I mean, that, that's really the truth. In LinkedIn posts, but ma making it private again doesn't mean anything. They didn't sign up for benefits. I didn't sign up for benefits because I didn't want to pay the extra four hundred dollars a month or whatever it was at my company for health insurance. Again, this isn't an indicator, and you've admitted that already, but defaulted to having the camera off in meetings. I feel like everyone does this, and the people who have their cameras on, just ask them to stand up next time, see if they have pants. Slow response times on Slack email. Yeah, so this is... I feel like, and, and also, like, this guy is going on a tirade about this, and it's very clear that he's talking about two use cases. So it's not like this has been an ongoing problem at his company that's happened for years. He's made all of these lists here true in both cases here. This happened to this this was two people and now he's writing a list of everything else people need to worry about based off of two people. Holy shit. I wonder, I wonder whenever he invested in those other 11 companies, if he looked at studies that were done with a sample size of two, and he said, oh, wow, this is great. Yeah, this, this is really high-quality fucking information here. Yeah, let's make a decision on this right away. The stuff that, that gets me, right? If you're going to yeah. work two jobs, don't be a douche. Like, make sure to do your work follow through, yeah, don't, yeah, you know, do your slow job, response yeah. times on sure. Slack and email. You say, frequently late to or absent for meetings with no explanation. I mean, yeah, fire Wow, them. yeah, I, that's, I can't believe somebody's working too. I, I feel like that's just, yeah, I mean, again, if this is what these guys were doing, then yeah, he was totally in the right to fire them. Yeah, he's trying with faulty reasoning to nip the problem of the bug. Problem is a problem he's making. He's not making the problem. He's not made this, 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 the CEO is not responsible for why these people are trying to seek two jobs. For all you know, these people could have been paid $120,000 a year and they're not living in San Francisco. They're making a good living and they're doing quite well, but $220,000 a year is half as much as two hundred and forty. So if you get two jobs, you get 240, that's a lot more money. It's almost a quarter of a million bucks. So yeah, that's not really, I, I don't like the idea that it's his fault or he's causing this. I think that people are just going to do this because it's, yeah, they're min-maxing. Everybody's going to min-max. If they're doing this stuff, fire them, you know? Worked for very large companies where it seems it may be easier to hang out and 
have divided efforts. I mean, that's just a smart Hide thing to do. This doesn't efforts, mean people yeah. are being overemployed, but some people like to work at huge corporations where they can be just a number and sit in their cubicle and nobody ever looks in their direction. Some people kind of like yep. that. What it sounds like to me here is you found two bad workers poorly attempting to Yeah, cap this is like, this is again, like these guys, bro, this is so common. And, and like girls do this too, is they have like one crazy girlfriend or one crazy boyfriend or asshole, and then they go on fucking Twitter and they have a laundry list of things that are red flags. And it's like number 17 is that he plays a certain character in Valorant. It's like, okay, just fucking stop. This has nothing to do with it. This correlation does not mean causation. Relies on being overemployed. It's nuts. Rather than two competent workers doing their jobs without any issue. Right. I'm willing to guess that you have other people at your company right now working other full-time jobs. You just don't know about it oh because they're doing it the right way. Among they're delivering us. and they've made no indications that they're trying to yeah. screw you over. Because there are plenty of overemployed people that do great in silence. Because they have to. Because of posts like this. Posts that blanket label people as dishonest. Well, it's very simple, right? It's that, it, it, assuming that there's no NDA or non-compete or something like that, disclosure agreement, um, what do you think the odds are this guy would fire somebody who was performing well at his company upon finding out that they're working two jobs? I think the chances of him firing them if they're performing well already is zero. I think, yeah, the, the chances are, are literally zero, in my opinion. And this is, again, assuming that there is no other conflict of interest or contractual, like, there's no, no breaking of contracts or anything like that. I think it's an ego issue. I mean, you could be right. You could very well be right. But I think that it's always easier to have an ego whenever you're firing somebody who's useless anyway or deceitful for doing what CEOs want people to do. Hustle. These CEOs are just upset that they're hustling for someone else instead of the CEO's company. He's turned off comments because someone called him and said something. Definitely don't. S someone said, yeah, the thing is, and this is the problem, is that it's very hard for people, for you to have disagreements on the internet without people turning it into, like, let me read this again. Because... Oh. Uh, well, that was just going to quiet for the comments until I got a phone call. Someone told me they'll help and die in a car crash. So I shut them off because it seems a little intense. Yeah, this is really, really over the line. Like somebody who's doing this again, like this is, this is just crazy. Yeah, this is why like if, if I do, or sorry, if, if I see people do this in my stream, I just always ban them. I don't think that there is any value in indulging people that are emotionally um, immature like this. One called him and said something. Definitely don't harass Davis for this um, or do yeah. any of that stuff, but you can't just make blanket statements labeling everyone working two full time jobs as thieves because yeah, some people have flex schedules. Some people figure out how to make it work. The, the, the only thing I normally hear is, well, what happens if you have two meetings at once? I don't know. You figure it out. You probably make up some excuse like you do on the regular with your one single job that most people have oh i can't go to a meeting i'm sick but you're just at target you know getting some pumpkin spice candles it, like people do this all the time not just because they have two jobs right people lie and deceive at work anyways whether they have two jobs or not yeah there are good people working two jobs there are bad people trying to take advantage of companies you know but you can't so. be upset about it because they're hustling that's what you want your employees to do right you just don't want them to do it for someone else but I would, I would suggest you reconsider your view. Yeah, I disagree. It's deceitful if you have to lie. Oh, yeah, I, I think so, too. I, I think that, yes, if you are lying and you're telling the company one thing, but you're doing something else, I think that if you say, I have a prior engagement, I can't be there at that time, like, that's fine, I guess, right? Because you're not technically lying, but it is being intentionally dishonest. So it's somewhere in the middle. It is gray, but it is not completely okay. You point on this, Davis, because speaking in absolutes just makes you look silly. Anyways, if you enjoy me roasting these CEOs, calling them out for their propaganda nonsense, go ahead, click that like button, click that subscribe button. You'll find a plethora of different content on this channel, but most of the time we're calling out corporate like this. So having said all that, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all the support.
from the last video. I appreciate all the DMs, all the emails, all the suggestions of things to read and watch. And Thank God. Make more videos. I'll watch them. And um, I'll see you in the next one. I like that video. That was a good video. Let me go ahead. Hi, everyone. This is, we're not going to watch this one right now. Um, Hi, everyone. Oh, Welcome back to my on. channel. On, if you're new stop, here, I'm please Courtney. Stop, please stop. Okay, there That's we go. Oh, no, 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 no. Liver King. No, that's something else. So today we got it. Okay, fucking it. It's just it's changing the button. Liver King. Yeah, I was watching part of it. I I watched the first like two minutes of it. I'm like, this is fucking funny. We should watch this on stream. Yeah, a hundred percent. I I love that guy. I think he's hilarious. Absolutely. So yeah, there's a video right there. I I love these kinds of videos because they're very good discussion videos, and um, I I really enjoy talking about this stuff because it's kind of a uh, it's a thought exercise uh in general i've heard companies saying that employees charging their phone at work is stealing after raising the energy prices i mean there's always going to be morons out there i'm not a fan of like just being uh de facto against corporate it's like oh i hate corporate I i'm not a big fan of that either because i think that it's just as uh uh it, it, it it's you're, you're taking a default position that is not based in reality. You know, your, your fundamental position is not, like the place that you're landing at, the place that you're at, it, you're, you've not arrived there based off of the information that you've accrued or gained from the situation. This is some prior bias. So I, I don't think this is necessarily a good thing. However, I do really like this guy's content. I like the video. Um, he explained it pretty well. This isn't a 45 minute video and I appreciate that. So it's a good video. Uh, Joshua, we've never watched him before. We'll probably watch him again. I like this. 99% of companies are labor pyramid schemes. If you sign the contract, you have to have some personal fucking accountability, okay? You sign the contract and you say, I will do X for Y and you get Y and you're not doing X then you are the problem. Have some accountability for what you sign yourself up for. You can't sign away your rights. No, you cannot sign your way your rights, and you can also not sign a contract that requires you to uh, violate an NDA or to break the law. So keep that in mind as well. So any contract, uh, and, and this was also, remember whenever uh, that girl hurt herself at TwitchCon, you can't sign contracts usually that void negligence either uh, or, or disclaimers or waivers or something like that. So there are many things that contracts actually do not indemnify people from. So I think that's a good thing. I didn't sign anything to be born in this world. There, there you go, brother. Hell yeah. Let's see here. Let's see. Uh, let's see him write an article about your employer not giving you the raises uh, you deserve being stealing. Oh, wait, that'll never happen. Yeah, of course not. Um, they love it whenever they can work you more than 40 hours. They hate it whenever you finish your work in less than 40 hours. True. Why not lie to an employers? Employers lie to employees all the time. Very fucking true. Uh, if, you, if you are constantly lying to employees, and there are some cases where you have to not tell employees certain things, uh, especially for insider trading reasons. Uh, this happened, for example, with the, Blizz, uh, the Blizzard, let's say BlizzCon, uh, the Blizzard uh, Microsoft merger. Uh, they didn't tell a lot of the employees because of concerns of, uh, of insider trading. And I think this is a fair concern, but it's also fair for employees to feel like they got misled. Sure. You definitely, uh, you can definitely sign those contracts. They just can't enforce them. Yes, you know, no, you're right. You can sign the contract that's just not enforceable. Uh, you're right. Boomer CEO managing three companies, renting 50 departments. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, give me one second before we do that. I'll, I'll, I'll respond to a few comments before we uh, move on. Corporate's default is to take advantage of people, so people's default should be anti-establishment. Yeah. Well, what is the idea that corporate's default is to take advantage of people? What, what would you say to somebody who said that the people's default is to take advantage of corporations? Because like both of these statements and both of these positions are not arrived at through anything else probably other than speculative data. Like this is it, like you, you can't make a projection like that and have it hold any real value. How do I send you money? It's, it's, take my money, rich man? Shut up. Shut up, idiot. Ideally, things aren't operated on, on the efficient market principle. Many things uh, would be different ideally, okay? 
Let's be honest. I concern myself extremely left wing, but this guy's wrong about most of this. Doing what he's recommending is just asking for no upward mobility in your career. Um, I don't necessarily think that's true. I, I think that like my my perspective of how I've looked at like especially whenever I was being paid an hourly wage, I looked at people buying my time. So if you're if you're buying my time and you said I'm going to give you thirteen dollars, I think I, I think I made like fourteen dollars at the government. I, I I don't remember exactly. It was like G four, G five or something like that. I don't remember. And and I also got overtime because I would work a lot during the uh the, the good hours. And um anyway so I looked at it as you're buying my time. So from, you know, uh, 4 p.m. to like 1 a.m., I will do whatever you want me to do. You know, you want me to sweep the floors, I'll sweep the floors. You want me to make food, I'll make food. Actually, I don't like making food because it, it would make me sick uh, being around. That's one of the main reasons I quit Sam's. But on top of that, uh, you know, like you want me to throw away garbage, I'll throw away garbage. You want me to dance, I'll dance like a monkey. I have no problem with this. Right. So that that that's my philosophy on things with like but that's also because I felt like it was an equitable transaction. I felt like I was being adequately compensated for my contribution. Uh, I think a lot of people don't feel like they are. But every time that somebody feels like they're not doesn't mean that they're right.